Welcome to the first episode of the Punk Popcast. I'm Brad, and I'm joined by Jason, and we're going to talk about punk pop, punk pop, punk pop music today. Pop punk, pop punk. Let me start that over. It's <laughs> the Punk Popcast. Welcome to the Punk Podcast. I'm Brad. Like I said, I'm joined by Jason. Uh, we wanted to do a podcast, right, Jason? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's funny because our friendship started out over baseball, and then we just the uh-huh. more we started talking, we found out we both love pop punk music. <laughs> like love, love it. So here we are talking about pop punk on a podcast on the Punk Podcast. Easy to say. So, uh, first, Jason, why don't you give some of your background into pop punk? Um, I mean, obviously, just the genre in general. Our generation, this was like, I feel like it's the sound of our generation, at least, you know, growing up in high school, you know? Right. Uh, Yeah, now I would definitely agree with that. Um, I I guess, technically, my first pop punk album was was Dookie when I was 10. (laughs) (laughs) You know? (laughs) Real quick, I remember being in fourth grade, fourth grade, man. Uh, we had like a little buy and sell day, you know, uh, where you, like you have like all your currency that you've earned from like being good in class. And then you go and their kids either have like games you can play and win prizes or just like crap from their room that they wanted to sell for fake money. Um, yeah. This girl in my class, she comes over to me. She's like, I bought Dookie for 10 bang bucks or whatever they are. I was like, you bought Dookie with fake money she's like i did and it turned out this kid was just going through the house and he found his brother's green day album and brought it to the buy and sell oh man (laughs) (laughs) oh man but anyways go ahead i'm sorry no no that was fine um yeah i remember i really dug the songs off that out like the singles because watched a lot of mtv as a kid Um, you didn't (laughs) and um I just remember my parents somehow figured out I liked it and it was a gift. Uh, I don't know if it was for my birthday or something like that, but I got it and just played the crap out of it. When I Come Around was my favorite song on that album at the time. That's strong. That's a good album. And I mean, this is the thing. We're going to get into all this stuff like way more in depth later. But Dookie is a strong album from start to finish, I feel like. And for a long time, the one that I absolutely loved... And because of the like the drive and the pace of it was um, "Welcome to Paradise." Great song. I could listen to that song just over and over and over and over again. Like loved it so so much. Um, so yeah, I totally feel you with Dookie. Um, sorry, go ahead. I cut you off again. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's okay. Um, and and for me, Dookie was like my introduction to the hidden song. <laughs> <laughs> God, how, how <laughs> myself and other kids in fourth grade didn't get in trouble for singing all by myself. It's unreal. <laughs> oh, God, it's so cringeworthy now that I'm like 36 and I have a nine year old daughter. <laughs> oh, I know. If, if I were to hear my son walking around and sing that song, I'd be like, where did you learn that? <laughs> <laughs> the cassette so, tape you got me which is dating me even more <laughs> <laughs> yes we are middle-aged <laughs> we're not quite there yet jeez <laughs> i have four more years till i hit that okay <laughs> um but then like high school years i, I really got into it like p- like middle school i was big into hair metal <laughs> mm. Because I just, I don't know, I had to be different from everyone else because that's what I did. Um, But then, like, high school age, I started really getting into into pop punk and just kind of never stopped listening to it. Yeah. And what was the, uh, what was, so if Dookie was your first, like, exposure to pop punk, what would you say is was your first, like, uh, the first album that you got that you're like, yeah, this is my, this is my jam. Like, this is what I'm about. Um. No, see, I'll be talking about it later. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. <laughs> but um, just real quick, it was it was Sticks and Stones by Newfound Glory. Okay. Yeah. I had, gonna... I had others, but that was the one that sealed it for me. Yes. 
Absolutely. hundred percent. And like you said, we're going to talk about it later because we're going to talk about our top three favorite pop punk albums ever. Um, so for me, my first exposure to, uh, to pop punk came from Goldfinger. Okay. So we were, we were on a road trip as a family road trip. And I want to say it was, um, it had to have been 90, probably 96, 97. Um, the album, this Goldfinger self-titled album that came out in 96, we were driving through Boise and we always stopped at the outlet malls on the outskirts of town for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why, especially, and I think, I think it's just like a good bathroom stop, you know? So there was a radio station there playing, uh, playing some music and they had like a little wheel you could spin. My oldest sister and I, we went over, spun the wheel. We won LA gear t-shirts. And there we go. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, LA gear. <laughs> and then my other sister, she's like, Well, I want a t-shirt. I'm like, all right, go spin the wheel. So she goes over there, she spins the wheel and wins Goldfinger. We had no idea who it was, we had no idea what it was. We just knew that there was a um, borderline pornographic cartoon on the front, illustration <laughs> on the front. <laughs> so me being at the time <clears throat> like 10 or 11 or whatever it was, I was like, Oh dang, I'm not sure what this is, but okay. And so it just kind of sat. It just like it just sat for a little while, especially since it was a CD. No, we didn't all have CD players at the time, right? And so, so it just kind of sat for a little while, and then probably two years later, something like that, we all had our portable CD players. We were on a road trip, and my sister was like, "Let's put this in, check it out." We're like, okay, and it's not exactly family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> the album is not so there were, there were a few songs that we went through and we would skip 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 you know because my parents weren't having it but we got to mabel it's like track seven or eight and i was like yeah this is this is my sound right here i love it and so that was like i said i was like 12 or 13 at the time by the time i got around to actually listening to that self-titled album and then when I was 15 and in high school, I had a buddy move from Calif- up from California, and he was like, guys, we're just driving around. He's like, guys, check this out. He puts in Mest. And, Love Mest. And Cadillac was the first song that came on in this mix that he had burned off of. I think it was um, Audio Satellite or something like that. I can't remember. Anyway, so Cadillac came on. And I was like, oh, there it is that sweet nectar from the gods. And so I was like completely sold all in on pop punk. And uh, I have not stopped listening to it. I've gone through spells where I'd listen to a little bit, a little bit harder stuff, a, uh, a little bit more uh, rap, whatever, but it's pop punk has always been the well for me to go back to as far as like comfort music that and incubus, but that's a whole nother thing. But, <laughs> but yeah, so pop punk has been like the thing for me ever since then. I absolutely love it. It's, it, there's been kind of like the ebb and the flow, I guess, of the up and the down of it, uh, style wise. But overall, it's it's been my jam for sure. It's definitely, and I agree with that. It's it's a comfort food kind of thing. Yes, that's a good way to put it. Comfort food, I love that. So, um, so pop punk itself, Jason. We we talk about this a lot because we you know we throw we throw bands to uh, to and from each other. Um, about like how broad of a genre this is, but what would you consider to be pop punk to you, Jason? Like, uh, like the sounds, the styles, like what, what is it? And I guess like, what is it not? Like at what point does it go from being pop punk to being like post metal or something or some, I don't know, post hardcore, whatever. I don't know, you know, to like actually being pop music. Uh, for me, um, there's a couple things just off the top of my head. It's got to have a sing song chorus. You got to be able to sing along with it either at the top of your lungs or just to yourself in the car, you know, or, or with a bunch of people at a concert or basement or crappy punk club. Um, <laughs> um, it, 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 I don't want to say it has to hit you in the feels, but it's got to, it has to almost trigger a feeling or a nostalgia. Like it, it either can take you back somewhere or you can understand what the lyrics are about. I'm a big lyrics guy, and that's my downfall with music is <laughs> lyrics sucker me in more than the music. Um, and I, I think th- I think a, a sing song chorus is is the biggest thing, and and I think that goes to like with a lot of the bands I like in pop punk. Um, and I think 
because this 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 world of music is so overreaching um you're right there there's like fine lines because there's a fine line between like pop punk and emo there's a fine line between pop punk and punk there's a fine line between pop punk and ska like when you were mm -hmm. talking about 1996 and goldfinger it flashed me back to like my birthday in 96 i got tragic kingdom from no doubt <laughs> oh my gosh i did i got that one too I totally forgot about that. How did I forget? Right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Listen to that till it almost like almost till it didn't work. Yeah. And, and, and I had it on I had it on cassette. <laughs> <laughs> so many pencils were used to <laughs> fix that. <laughs> um but there but like you can hear the similarities in a lot of these different genres. But there are definitely bands that are just pure pop punk, and there's bands that can play around with the different genres and still have that root in pop punk. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, it was always um there were there were a few things. First off, like have a good melody that's not overly complicated, right? Like I played in a pop punk band, and we were like looking back, we're all four of us like we weren't good. You know, but it, it's fine because it was pop punk, so you didn't have to be. All you had to be was catchy, right? Right. Catchy, and then like we did, we rocked out. We weren't good, but we still rocked out, and that that was kind of what we did. Um, but the other thing for me was when I was really, really like heavy into pop punk, like the whole like skater scene, and all that stuff. I was actually like really big into snowboarding, and for me, a big, uh, big criteria was like. Would I want to listen to this on the mountain? Is this something that would get me going in, like make make me want to do something stupid? I guess you could say <laughs> because I was I was so pumped up from it. Um, uh, can can I know, say so, this? Uh, yeah, go jackass ahead. factor. Yes, yeah, <laughs> it, it gives you kind of it does give you kind of that jackass factor that you're willing to do something that you wouldn't normally do. And I don't want to mess. And like I didn't like smoke weed or anything, but like it kind of puts you in that mentality of like, I'm invincible because I'm, I'm amped up right now. Okay. You know, so just sorry, sorry to cut you off, but, and the next time you're on my other show with David and I, you can ask him and verify this. I, at the age of 18, I was absolutely convinced I could barge a car and not get hurt. Like you I, what? barge a car. So like what's, what's barging a car. That must be an East coast thing. Um, if you've ever watched jackass, bam's done it. Where someone's driving a car and you jump at just the right time, so you don't actually get hit by the car, you land on the hood. Oh, and then you like roll over it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, one. Keep in mind, I was like 180 pounds and in really good shape when I, when I was 18, but I was totally convinced I could do this. How'd that end for you? We never tried it because David's mom would have killed us. <laughs> <laughs> But that is a true story. I, I was completely convinced I could do this. That's so funny. That's, <laughs> that is so funny. But yeah, like that stupid stuff like that. Like I remember going snowboarding and if I had my music on, there was no jump I wouldn't hit, no cliff I wouldn't jump off. And I'm not kidding you. Like like I remember going up on the lift and being like, there's enough powder down at the bottom. That's fine. You know, just like that stupid stuff. And not to say that, pop punk makes you do stupid things because that's a dumb thing to say but it just it put me in a state where i had all the confidence in the world because it was it was speaking to me right and i'm not really one for the lyrics i remember uh growing up and like just subconsciously walking around the house singing stuff and somebody in my family like my sister or my mom or something be like what did you just say well i don't know, <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm not paying attention. I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, so if for me, it's more the sound than the lyrics itself. But anyway, let's take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to talk about our top three pop punk albums. Nine Plus Us presents the Baseball Together podcast with your hosts, Blackjack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes. Weekly episodes for the entire baseball family where we talk all baseball all the time. Available on all your favorite podcast apps and on YouTube. Come join our baseball family where we do baseball together. I'm Jason. And I'm David. And we're the hosts of the Non-Nor Sports Podcast. We're the home of sports talk for everyone. 
Join us bi-weekly as we talk about the happenings in sports. You can find the Another Sports Podcast on Anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and wherever else you find your podcasts. All right, and we're back uh, to the Punk Popcast. Uh, so what we're going to do now in this segment is talk about our top three pop punk albums. So Brad, why don't you uh, lead off here? Okay, do we want to do this just me three in a row? Or let, let's alternate. Let's alternate. Build up a little bit of suspense, I think, should be <laughs> what we do here. So we're going to go three uh, to one. Is that how you want to do this? Um, Like counting backwards? N- like we're Casey Kasem? Oh, I don't want to do the case to case. Let's just do uh, <laughs> three in no particular order, but it'll still have some suspense because you don't know what the third one's going to be. Okay. Right. Um, I am going to go with uh, my first one will be tell all your friends by taking back Sunday. Now, when I talk about um, songs or albums or bands that make me want to do stupid stuff on a snowboard, <laughs> um legitimately i'm not kidding you i am absolutely not kidding you taking back some, this album is the first thing that comes to mind just because of the rhythm and the cadence of every single song on it like the first time i heard it i was like i have to listen to this on a snowboard i have to i absolutely have to and to be honest with you i don't know that i ever did i don't know that i ever got to <laughs> but There's still time uh not really <laughs> <laughs> let's be let's be honest <laughs> but, but cute without the e in particular is one of my absolute favorite songs ever the original version the acoustic version is my favorite song ever to play on the guitar if i'm just sitting like absentmindedly strumming my guitar it always ends up regardless of anything else that i've done to that point it always ends up uh being cute without the e because that's that's one of the best songs ever and we'll get and what we're going to do eventually is we're going to get more in depth on these bands on these albums and we're going to talk more about the meaning behind some of these because this album has like so some much. layers to it and there is a lot and it's outstanding <clears throat> and the motivation behind some of the songwriting has produced in my opinion some of the best pop punk sam- songs like ever and even some like the best just some one-liners too it's so good oh yeah top to bottom one of my favorite albums <clears throat> to ever listen to and, right, and real ahead, quick Jason. Oh, I just want to add in. Uh, we were in our text the other day, and I said, "This song reminds me of moments in my life, and they're not exactly good moments." Because <laughs> I can hear some of these songs, and I'm like, "Yep." <laughs> and there, I feel like there's at least one or two on every single album too, where you're just like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. Um. Okay, so my next one is, or my first one, I should say, uh, is A Lesson in Romantics uh, from May Day Parade. So it was their debut full-length album. They had an EP in 2006. Um, and I, I'm a, a big May Day Parade fan. I, I love pretty much everything they've done outside of their Atlantic album, which came out in 2009 and was kind of more hit or miss. Then a lot of outside writers on that one, which kind of hinders them. Um, I think... 90% of this album is just strong lyrically, musically. Um, Jamie All Over is a great song. Um, Jersey's a great song. Um, I'm blanking here now. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's their only album with Jason Lancaster as a co singer. Um, he would leave the band right before it was released, and their drummer Jake would take over the alternating vocal duties. Um, but this kind of set the table for everything that was ahead of them. Very cool. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I have listened to so little Mayday Parade that I can't even play some. <laughs> I I should have listened to this today when you texted me about it, but I just did not. <laughs> they they are very much, and I would say they're probably at the emo end of pop punk, where they have okay. some stuff that can go that route. Yeah. Um, but they always have the big chorus. They always have the hooks. The root and heart of that band is pop punk, whether they go into other genres. Yeah. So be it. Yeah. I And I got to tell you, I'm, I'm going to check them out because I love a big chorus. Like, love a big chorus. That was one thing. Um, I was trying to get a band together when I was getting in, when I was in college. And one of the things I told my buddy, I was like, I, was like, I just I want huge choruses. I just, I want it to build and I want it to be enormous. 
And so that was that was something that we that we always did because we actually we ended up writing probably about half an album, and every one of them had those big choruses. I would say this: if if you're gonna listen to Mayday Parade and you want the you you and you really want the big choruses, their 2011 self titled album has some amazing big choruses like "Oh Well," um, "When You See My Friends," "You're Dead Wrong," just huge choruses. You would like them. Cool, done my list. I listen to it uh, probably on Monday while I'm working now. All right. My next one. Um, Let's go with... I'm going to go with some Newfound Glory. Their self-titled album. Um, This one, it's... It's very... It's a little bit more punk, I feel like, than what Sticks and Stones was afterwards. Um, But at the same time, it was really easy to sing along to really really easy to sing along to i feel like i bought this album just because because i had bought six and stones first but then i went in and i was like oh i like i know a couple of those songs so i went and bought it and i swear to you i had the entire album memorized like on the third time through and i don't know if it's because the lyrics were predictable the music was predictable either way i don't care it felt familiar and i loved every single bit of it and it was absolutely outstanding such such a good album, such a good, and I know it's not their debut, but it felt like it. I think I think it was like their major, their first like big record, like big label debut off of like drive through or whatever. Um, but it was really well done. It was really well put together. I love it. I still love it to this day. I listen to it on a regular basis. It's a great one. So uh, my mine my, my second one is also newfound glory. Uh, mine will be sticks and stones. <laughs> <laughs> and and ironically enough, like you, I had sticks and stones first. Well, I, I think I think that's just the way that it was. Everybody was introduced to him with sticks and stones, right? Uh yeah. So funny thing, tying back to, to your pick, the the self titled album. Uh, I had a a former girlfriend. She knew I was getting into pop punk. She she gave me a mix of like she's like you might like these songs. Check them out. Uh-huh. And like three of the songs were all about her. Uh, Dress to Kill and Hit uh-huh. or Miss, yeah, and they were great songs. So I ended up buying so the good. album. And to tie this back to Sticks and Stones, I think Newfound Glory wrote two of the greatest pop punk songs ever in in Hit or Miss and Off of Sticks and Stones. Um, head on Collision, Head on Collision, and so I think good. not only is Head on Collision a great song, but the influence of that song, All Time Low, exists and has the name because of Head on Collision. Oh my gosh. I had never <laughs> thought of that. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Holy smokes. You just you just blew my mind now, Jason. <laughs> I had I had never made that connection. I had I had no idea about that. So my my friend Matt, who I've re- mentioned to you before from the A show, he's uh-huh. the one who told me that cuz he saw All Time Low perform on their first tour. Uh-huh. And he's like, yeah, they they're named af because of the song. Wow, that's nuts. <laughs> and the thing that's funny is like I was thinking about this the other day because one of the episodes I eventually want to do is I want to do worst band names because there were so many who tried to use like an obscure reference to like a to like a movie. You know, like I feel like Save Ferris, Rooney, those are really good, really good yeah. names. But there's one, uh, it's like. It's Chunk, Captain Chunk. I'm like, no, that's stupid. You're just taking a line from a movie like with no context. It, it doesn't make any sense. So but, Al- Allie with an I is Allie from The Karate Kid. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because in, in the movie, she says it's Allie with an I. Yeah. Yeah. And and that that works for a band name, right? But yeah. Some of them don't. But anyways, All Time Well, that's an outstanding one. That's great. That's a good little nugget. I like that a lot. Um, but anyway, back to the album real quick. Uh, great album, top to bottom. Great lyrics. Um, and you got to think, I was 17 going on 18 when that album came out. So it was like right in that like peak end of high school romanticism kind of era. And oh. all those lyrics just were perfect for that time period. Um, real quick, was that the one? I can't remember which uh, which album had the like the bonus track or whatever at the end where it was like, there's somebody in the house. That is that album. That is. Did you listen to that album ever going to bed at night? Uh, no, but I know exactly I, what you're talking about. Because my buddies and I, <laughs> we all did. And it was almost like the next day, it was like, did you 
<laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I did too. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Got it did. Yep. Everyone yep. has toothpick on table. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's how I knew this was a band I would like because they were just goofy. <laughs> like they didn't take themselves too seriously. And I'm like, yeah. I can get behind this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. My next one, this one has a lot of like really heavy with nostalgia for me. This is one of the bands that really kept like, I guess, brought me in really deep to pop punk because they were so unique. That's Yellow Card and Ocean Avenue to me. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily their best album. I'll say that because they had some later stuff that was pretty strong. But Ocean Avenue is one of my absolute favorite albums ever because the summer that it came out, summer of 03, I was going into my senior year. And that was like, you know how you have those summers where just like you look back, you're like, yeah, I got to do like everything I wanted to do that year. And everything I did that summer, I was listening to Ocean Avenue. Um, I learned how to boogie board and we listened to, we listened to ocean Avenue the entire way out to the beach and we would sing one year, six months when the waves, when the waves, uh, started slowing down and they'd always pick up, pick back up. So we called that the wave God song. We would listen to it when we were going up, up to the mountains to go cliff jumping and swimming in the river. And so that was like, that was the soundtrack to me being 17, turning 18 and like, like it was seriously the soundtrack for an entire year of my life is and it's just it's so good it's melodically it's really really strong really like i said it's one of those things that feels familiar you know sean mackin on the violin just shreds which is a weird thing to say about a pop punk band but at the same time it's <laughs> outstanding it's such a good addition to the music it adds you know, such the, a nice layer to their songs it does and so much so that I got to a point where I was like, my sister plays the violin. I was like, you got to teach me how to play because I need to. <laughs> and she's like, uh, you're never touching my violin, by the way. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's Ocean Avenue to me is one of is one of my absolute favorite favorite albums ever. All right. And uh, so my last one is Take This to Your Grave by Fall Out Boy. Um. I don't think there was out of any album and, and, and you know, like some of the bands I like, I love Prince. I love kiss, love Motley Crue, love 18 visions love a lot of bands. Mm -hmm. I don't think any album had as much of an impact on me as take this to your grave did. It was, it, it, it hit home like immediately from the very first mm -hmm. song. It's like, I, I got, I understood every, everything in the album. Um, when, when I was in my band, I don't think, any album had more influence on me as a songwriter, sadly, than take this to your grave, which led to <laughs> overly wordy choruses <laughs> and random song titles, probably. Oh, the longest song. The song titles were longer than the, than the actual song. Um, <laughs> I hear that because of, because of Fall Out Boy, exact same thing, exact same thing. But you know, it was, it was a perfect album for when I was 18, oddly enough, summer of 03. Uh, it was the perfect album for like 2003 to 2004 for me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm 36 now. I can go back and listen to it. And I think it still holds up. I mean, it does. Comparison wise, and I've, I've read and, and I agree with it. It's a lot like the police's debut album. It was raw, but y everything that you heard later was already there. Yeah. Like, and so for, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. So, I was going to have this in my top three, but I knew you were going to have it in your top three. So I took it out. Um, it's, it's outstanding. I saw fallout boy, uh, fall of Oh three on the take this to your grave tour with yellow card and less than Jake. They were, they opened, they were just the necessary band on, on the card or whatever, you know, that was like the, that was an addition to, cause they're, they were touring with less than Jake because they were on fueled by ramen at the time. Right, which was which is labeled by the drummer from Less Than Jake, um, so that's why they were touring. And I remember they came out and they played, you know, for fifteen minutes or whatever. And I was literally, literally, Jason, I was standing two people from the very front, like from the barricade at the front of the mosh pit or whatever, you know. And I was just like staring up, just like this is incredible. It wasn't like anything I had ever heard up to that point. And 
it took me a year from that point to be able to find the album for sale anywhere because this was before the days of Amazon and, and a whole lot of online shopping. So it was finally a year later that I was able to find the album anywhere to buy because it just, just wasn't available because it was such a small label. And it, it does. The album holds up. It is, it's Fall Out Boy to me. It's some of their absolute best work and some of the best work by any, any pop punk band ever. So, so do you want to know how I first heard of Fall Out Boy? Yes, and it's it's so obscure I can't find the clip on on YouTube anywhere. So I want to say like late 2002 they were featured on MTV like MTV would have like a news clip and then it would be like an upcoming band or a, a new band you might want to follow and it was uh -huh. Fallout Boy and it was them talking about how they got their name. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> and and like it was like a 5 minute clip that was it and then like a year later I had the album like it, it yeah and i wish i could find that i look for it like every couple months and i never find it again i'll see if i can find it and we'll put a link to it because so for those of you this i guess transitioning um we're gonna do this this is gonna be a weekly thing uh it's not a current event thing so these are all gonna be pre-recorded uh we're also gonna put this on youtube but what what i'll do is jason i'm gonna look for that clip and i will put it down in the description so anybody who wants to can go follow it and find it and watch that video i wish you um, luck <laughs> <laughs> I'll see. I'll see if I can, or if I can find some version of it, some version of them telling the story about how they they got their band name. Because I th I've heard the story and I think it's hilarious. I love it. But anyway, so like I said, we're going to be doing this every single week. We're going to be talking about some of our favorite bands, some of the. I think we'll go what individual album for each band at a time, right? I think that's a good idea because I think that's how we'll do that. Like with um, Newfound Glory, look at how many albums they have. We could be here till. <laughs> We could so next I don't, week recording one episode. <laughs> I don't know that we're necessarily going to uh, dedicate like a month to a band, but it'll be kind of along those lines. And we'll do a couple episodes for a band and, and do an episode uh, episode for a couple albums. But uh, we'll also talk about, like I said, some of the best band names, some of the worst band names, uh, covers. I love covers. Absolutely love I do covers. Too. I love, listen to Punk Goes Pop all the time still. And uh, yeah, we'll just have some more stuff for you, but it's all going to be pop punk related because as we've said before, we love pop punk and that's why this is the punk podcast. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.